Six o'clock news starts right now. A soupy start to the work week. No sign of the sun with off and on drizzle for a good part of the day. And it looks like those clouds, they'll be sticking around. Katie Blake with the details and the latest on our rain chances coming up in your weather authority forecast. Via looking to the future of transportation and they want to hear from you about what you think about their new transit plan. It's a 10 year plan called via reimagine said to include better transit options like an advanced rapid transit network with dedicated lanes to keep everyone moving. And as Stephanie Cerner reports, although the plan was put together after reviewing years of public input, via still wants your input as they move forward. San Antonio is growing. Via is working to get ahead of what could be a significant traffic crunch. Freeway lanes can only do so much. They're an important element, but they're not going to be able to handle it all. And so it's very important we use every tool in the toolbox. And these are tools that can that will provide a transit system that I would say anyone could find attractive. Their Via Reimagined plan is a 10-year plan that includes a better bus system, an advanced rapid transit network, with dedicated lanes to keep transit moving, and smart transit, which will use technology. Right now, San Antonio does not have dedicated lanes. We do not have that right now. Uh, we have Primo, which is similar to advanced rapid transit, but Primo does not operate in a dedicated lane. And it's the dedicated lane that allows you to get better speed, better reliability. Uh, so ART would operate in that manner, in that separated lane. And VIA wants to know what you think, so they will be hosting a series of tele-town halls where they will take your questions. The plan that we prepared is, is really the product of two years worth of public comment. Um, and so as we have honed it down into a plan now, we're interested in what the public's perspective of the plan that they actually helped us design is. And that telephone town hall is set for Wednesday at 7 o'clock. The link to register is via reimagine.com. You can also find that link on our website at kset.com. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. A southeast side neighborhood disrupted by gunfire and inundated with local and federal law enforcement after an attempt to serve a warrant turns deadly. This is happening outside of a home on Stetson View. That's in the Southton Ranch subdivision. Police say a wanted man became aggressive, used a vehicle as a weapon, forcing officers to open fire. Devin Clark has been there all day. Devin joins us live from the scene. Devin, at 5 o'clock, it looked like some arrests had been made. That's right, Steve. The man you mentioned earlier was killed hours ago, but during our live report at 5 o'clock, we saw what appeared to be three people, two women, and a man being taken into custody. They had their hands cuffed in front of them. We can also tell you that since that's happened, we stopped hearing a voice that was coming over a loudspeaker asking people to come out of a house. Also, there was a drone that was hovering over this area that has since disappeared. However, the scene behind me is still active, as you can see. Now, this is all after San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says that a man wanted on an ATF felony warrant for a felon in possession of a gun refused to surrender. The chief says task force officials supported by SAPD surrounded the wanted man outside of a house on Stetson View, but the man, possibly in a stolen vehicle, ended up ramming into occupied police vehicles. That's when officials opened fire. One man who lives in a house behind the scenes said he was enjoying the day reading a book outside when the sound of gunshots sent him running inside to take cover. It was just pop, 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 six, seven shots, and that was it. And five, ten minutes later, I just see a body just getting drugged out. Now, the man that he's referring to, the man who was killed, was dragged down the street by officers because they weren't sure if anyone else was still inside of the house that could pose a threat. Of course, this investigation is far from over. Chief McManus anticipates this being a lengthy one, so we hope to get more details in the coming days, and of course, we'll deliver those to you. Reporting live on the southeast side tonight, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. We now know the name of the man killed in a south side crash over the weekend, 19-year-old George Anthony Vasquez. The accident happened Sunday morning along Old Corpus Christi Road near Division Avenue. According to police, Vasquez lost control, ran off the road in his vehicle, and crashed into a tree and flipped that car. He was pronounced dead at the scene. San Antonio police looking for answers after a deadly shooting at a northeast side construction site. A man's co-workers found him shot in his pickup truck this morning. That was near Eisenhower and Midcrown. As Katrina Weber reports, what police have not found so far are witnesses. 
It didn't take long for this gloomy Monday morning to take an even darker turn for a construction crew at this job site. San Antonio police say within minutes of their arrival, they found a co-worker unconscious inside his parked pickup, his driver's side window shattered. And initially thought that he was assaulted and EMS arrived to later find out that uh, he had a gunshot wound to the left side of his head. The truck was parked toward the back of the site, a new neighborhood being built off Eisenhower Road near Midcrown. It's an area with no lights, and police believe the shooting happened before the sun came up. Employees say that he, he has a routine of arriving here about 5 o'clock, and they found him about 6.30. The man who was in his late 40s was rushed to a hospital where he died. Detectives spent some time at the scene searching through his truck for evidence. Early on, they said they had not found any weapons there. This construction site is right next door to pre-K for SA, but police say at no point were any of those children in danger, and they didn't have to put the school on lockdown. They do hope to track down someone who knows what happened. Police say the construction site itself does not have any cameras, but they plan to check other businesses nearby for possible surveillance video. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio police arresting a man they say shot a homeless man several times over the weekend, apparently over his bicycle. 28-year-old Alfredo Martinez facing an aggravated robbery charge. Officers responded to a shooting call near North Brazos and Kaufman Court and found the victim lying in the street. Investigators believe Martinez tried to steal the man's bicycle. At some point, they say a gun came out and shots were fired. At last check, the victim was in critical condition. Almost a month after a shooting in downtown San Marcos, police say they have a suspect in custody. 44-year-old Vincent Favada is charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, one count of deadly conduct. The shooting happened outside of Harper's Bar on East Hopkins Street. Police say someone sitting in an SUV fired half a dozen shots then sped off. Two people had minor injuries. That bar, which was closed for a private party at the time, was also damaged. Time saver traffic. Going to show you the traffic conditions out there more than traffic trouble spots. This is Highway 90 at Leon Creek. You can see some flashing lights off in the distance. Not sure exactly what they're responding to, but again, just shows you how foggy, wet, miserable it is out there. So if you're out and about, please drive with care. Last night, the case had 12 defenders brought us Broken Blue, an hour long special that examined discipline within the San Antonio Police Department and protections currently in place that allow a majority of fired officers to get their jobs back. Dylan Collier, part of the team behind the project and has more on the community's reaction to it. The past decade, more than two thirds of fired San Antonio police officers have later had their terminations overturned by an arbitrator. So it's no surprise that a lot of questions from our case at 12 viewers are about the arbitration process, including this one. I know the taxpayers are paying for the police officer's paycheck. My question is, who's paying for the arbitration? Well, the answer comes from page 46 of the current collective bargaining agreement between the city and its police officers association. The city covers expenses for witnesses it calls. SAPOA handles expenses for witnesses it calls. And the two sides equally share the fees and expenses of the arbitrator. It's important to note that these arbitration hearings typically are held in city offices so there are no additional expenses to rent space. Our Broken Blue special can be watched in its entirety right now at ksat.com slash broken blue. There you will find a section to submit your own questions about officer discipline and the arbitration process. And Wednesday at 11 a.m. I will be answering your questions during an SAQ live stream on ksat.com. The current collective bargaining agreement expires at the end of September 2021. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Let's take another look outside with conditions out there. We have just been socked into this mess all day long. Katie, usually when we see fog in the morning, it clears on out of here, but not today. No, it has hung around. We haven't been able to warm up today because 
of the cloud cover that has been sitting over us here in San Antonio. So without that spread in air temperatures and dew points, that fog really hasn't been able to clear out completely. And we're looking at foggy conditions for the rest of the night and through the Tuesday morning commute. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, checking on the aquifer, down one-tenth of a foot since yesterday, and some pretty good news in the pollen count. Both mountain cedar and mold are down from where they were this weekend, but we could see mold sneak up a bit tomorrow because it was just so damp and humid out there today. The latest on your forecast coming up in just a few minutes, Steve. Thank you, Katie. Which team of Tigers is the best college football team, Clemson or LSU? We're going to find out tonight. One last preview of the national championship game still to come in sports. I consider myself really lucky. Could fluid that surrounds a baby in the womb help relieve knee pain? How doctors say it worked for this man next at six. A Southside break in solved. How the owner of the business did a little bit of detective work and was able to find the suspected thief's home. About 54 million Americans suffer from the aches and the pains of arthritis. Treatments range from pain meds to injections to surgery. But now there's a new option, and it comes from the fluid that surrounds a baby in a woman's womb. Running is what keeps 77-year-old Marty Sasalzik feeling young. For me, it's enjoyable. And if you're not a runner, then you, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. But Marty's active lifestyle was in jeopardy when knee pain took over. And you got to sort of lay on the floor to get dressed. It's, uh, it's tough. Marty had arthritis. It happens when there's a loss of cartilage in the joint. It's like a tire, and as you slowly lose rubber on the tire and it wears away, you might need to have the tire replaced at some point. Marty's arthritis was too advanced for a scope procedure, but not bad enough for a joint replacement. So he enrolled in a study testing whether amniotic fluid, which surrounds a growing baby in the uterus, could help his pain. Amniotic products come from patients that are having healthy elective C-sections, and they choose to donate these products at the time of the delivery. The fluid is injected directly into the knee. It's thought to increase tissue, healing and lowering inflammation. Marty received a placebo during the study, but then chose to have the amniotic fluid when it ended. I mean, I didn't care if it was pixie dust, as long as my knee was gonna feel better. He went from not being able to get dressed to jogging about a week after having the injection. This morning I ran three and uh, three miles and I had no problem at all. Get this, amniotic fluid is also being used to treat ulcers in the eye. Rush University will be enrolling patients for a larger follow-up study on amniotic fluid for joint pain sometime in the future. All right, this is, a, you know, <laughs> I love San Antonio. It's usually sunny, nice <laughs> pictures. We're not getting that today. Not today. No, it's blah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good way to put it. We're looking at uh, 410 right now, and it doesn't look too bad, but I can't imagine it's been a fun commute for people. We were going to use home. the I-10 city cam to mm -hmm. start the show. You <laughs> couldn't see anything. Oh. No, uh, Courtney Friedman, I believe, is out uh, covering a story, and she posted a picture of the Tower of the Americas. You can't see the top of it yeah. because the cloud, uh, the cloud heights are so low now. They lifted a little bit this afternoon, still overcast, that's for sure. But now they're starting to lower again, which means we've got a lot of those low clouds in place. Those will produce some mist and drizzle. And we've also got fog redeveloping after a brief hiatus this afternoon. Here's the rest of your evening. Temperatures not budging much under this cloud deck upper 50s low 60s generally I think we should stay right around 60 degrees this evening and even through early tomorrow morning once we get closer to 10 11 p.m. tonight fog is going to become a lot more widespread across the area and it could also start to become a bit more dense and I'm expecting another dense fog advisory to come out late tonight or early tomorrow morning plenty of cloud cover all across uh, the southern portion of Texas right now earlier in the day it was a bit easier to pick up on some shower activity on radar uh, mainly off closer to the Houston area, even a few rumbles of thunder off well to the east of San Antonio. But now even that activity on radar has started to kind of fizzle out. And I think what we'll really see overnight is that mist and drizzle that's just not going to add up to much at all, but will be a real pain to drive through tonight and tomorrow morning. Temperature 60 degrees at the airport, 62 up in Fredericksburg, a bit warmer off to the southwest, 64 in Carrizo Springs. And here are our dew points. This is the culprit when it comes to the fog that has been with us through a portion of the day today. We had a south wind settle back in yesterday. 
that has cranked up our dew point temperatures big time and even uh, in 24 hours our dew point temperatures have risen some 10 to 15 degrees so we've got dew points upper 50s uh, low to mid 60s across south texas and again it's when the dew point and the air temperatures are very close together that's when we see fog develop so another round of fog early tomorrow morning as our dew point temperatures stay elevated for the rest of the week tuesday all the way through friday uh, some morning fog will be possible for the next couple of days so that is something to keep in mind and generally it will just be staying very humid out there for the rest of of the work and school week by the weekend though that's when we'll see our next round of changes our next cool front coming through that will really move all the way through and help to kind of sweep out the high humidity and also most of the cloud cover but that's not going to be until the start of the upcoming weekend so several more days to go uh, i want to give you a current look at visibility right now down to a quarter of a mile here in san antonio technically that is grounds for a dense fog advisory and we're seeing visibility also dropped near a quarter of a mile from gonzalez over to pleasanton new braunfels your visibility dropping as well so we could even see a dense fog advisory out within the next couple of hours so if you're home now and you've got some things to do this evening please keep in mind that the fog is not going to go anywhere it's going to be with us for the rest of the evening overnight tonight and through the start of rush hour tomorrow morning so even places with OK visibility now by early tomorrow morning. I'm expecting pretty much everyone to have some fog out there to start the day on Tuesday. So remember to use those low beam headlights. Another messy start to the day tomorrow. Aside from the fog, more light rain will be possible. Overcast skies will stay cloudy with a 20% chance of a shower through midday. Unlike today, we are expecting to see a few more peaks of sun tomorrow afternoon to help warm us up into the low 70s. By no means is it going to be a beautiful sunny afternoon, but some peaks of sun would help to warm us up just a little bit, but then fog rolling back in late tomorrow evening. So next couple of mornings, morning fog and drizzle for the commute. Keep that in mind. Uh, we'll see some maybe subtle changes by Wednesday into Thursday. There's going to be a frontal boundary that stalls out. It looks like just to the north of San Antonio and Highway 90. We'll be watching this closely tomorrow and into Wednesday. If this can nudge a bit farther south, closer to the Highway 90 corridor, that would bring some cooler air in and we would see a cooler day on Thursday. For now, I have our high temperatures in San Antonio on Thursday in the 70s because we should stay on the warm and humid side of this stalled out boundary, but as this stalls out near us, this will help to trigger some slightly heavier showers, maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder as we get into the day on Thursday. So when you look at your planning forecast next couple of days, you'll see 20% chance of rain tomorrow and Wednesday, but a 40% chance of some showers Thursday as that front stalls out. I think that's our best chance to pick up hopefully a little bit of measurable rain in and around San Antonio on Thursday. Front that clears everything out that arrives first thing Saturday morning to set us up for a nice weekend. It's going to get pretty chilly, though. A lot of cold air will be filtering in kind of gradually behind that front. We'll be in the 60s Saturday, 50s Sunday, and uh, the holiday on Monday for Martin Luther King Jr. Day looks pretty cool right now with some, some cloud cover rolling back in. That'll keep us on the chilly side. Big changes from this past weekend. I know. Huge contrast. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Katie. You're welcome. All right, so stealing signs equals losing jobs. Yes, it does, especially when it comes to the top two people, the officials in the Astros organization. In fact, their manager just released a statement, A.J. Hinch, saying he did not participate but understands the consequences of it because he didn't report it. When we come back, more about the cheating scandal that has lit up the 2017 World Series champions and college football's national championship decided tonight. MLB did a very thorough investigation and the Astros fully cooperated. Um, we accept their decisions and findings and penalties. Astros owner Jim Crane addressing the media today after general manager and manager have been suspended for the entire 2020 season and now fired for their role in sign stealing. More on that in a moment, but first, the biggest game of the season in college football is tonight when LSU meets Clemson to decide two things, the national championship in college football and who is the toughest Tiger. The LSU Tigers will put their 14-0 record on the line against Clemson Tigers. They're also undefeated at 14-0, looking to become just the fourth team in history to win three titles in four years, but they will have to knock off the number one ranked team in the nation tonight in New Orleans in order to do that. And in in front of a predominant LSU Tiger crowd since the game is in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in Louisiana. This game also features two of the best quarterbacks in college football and Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence with LSU as five and a half point favorites tonight. Everything that uh, we've done up to now 
is good, but it's not great. But we want to be great. And um, to finish the season strong with a win is our goal. It's been special. And uh, we certainly, you know, believe and, and, and hope and, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to win on the scoreboard, too. We know that matters. But, you know, no matter what, we're not defined by that. This has been uh, unbelievable. Kickoff is tonight in New Orleans. is set for 7 p.m. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Dallas Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson is going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a member of the class of 2020. That announcement made live on the air during the Fox playoff broadcast last night after Johnson led the Cowboys to back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles while the head coach of the Cowboys from 1989 to 1993, taking them from a 1-15 season in Troy Aikman's rookie year to back-to-back -back Super Bowl champs in Super Bowls 27 and 28, uttering those famous words, how about them Cowboys, after knocking off the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game to put them in their first Super Bowl in the 90s. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones releasing this statement on his election. We're so happy that the Hall of Fame has recognized Jimmy Johnson for what he is, a great coach. To Jimmy, I say the stars were aligned and our dreams came true when we joined the Dallas Cowboys. And on behalf of the Cowboys and our fans all over the world, I say congratulations, Jimmy. We're proud of you. The Green Bay Packers are the final team to join the Final Four of the NFL playoffs. They're winning their win over their stubborn Seattle Seahawks. That is after Aaron Rodgers threw for two touchdowns to Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones rushed for another two to advance to the NFC Championship game against San Francisco 49ers this Sunday, 28-23. Here's how they set up his first, the AFC Championship. That will be between Tennessee and Kansas City in Kansas Kansas City Sunday at 2.05 and then the NFC Championship game between the Green Bay Packers and of course San Francisco 49ers that'll be Sunday at 5.40 in Levi Stadium. Major League Baseball is coming down hard on the Houston Astros for cheating their, during their 2017 World Series run. As a result, the team has fired both general manager Jeff Lunau and manager A.J. Hinch for their role in sign stealing. Major League Baseball had already suspended the pair for the entire 2020 season after the league investigation had determined the team used a camera-based sign stealing system during the regular season and playoffs that led to their 2017 World Series title. Today, team owner Jim Crane announced their firings. I'm going above and beyond MLB's penalty. Today, I have made the decision to dismiss A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau. We need to move forward with a clean slate. Also, the Astros will lose their first and second round draft picks in 2020 and 2021 and find a record $5 million. And as you indicated earlier, this is not over yet. The investigation will also affect the Boston Red Sox coming up. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bill Belichick is glad he's not a baseball coach. <laughs> it's true. It's still to come at six, a Houston area couple facing charges after their toddler was kidnapped. What law enforcement says they did that put their child in danger. And both sides may be standing down, but that doesn't mean tensions have eased between the United States and Iran. What Tehran says, why Tehran says the U.S. is partially responsible for the shooting down of a Ukrainian passenger plane. Next. Iranian leaders are designating the Pentagon a terrorist organization. That says tensions between the United States and Iran seem to be simmering, but not altogether cooled. The development comes as Tehran admits its forces shot down a Ukrainian passenger plane. But as Whitney Wild reports, Iran is blaming the U.S. for ramping up aggression. The lead European aviation agency recommends commercial flights avoid flying above Iran, a sign they think the situation in the Middle East remains volatile after a Ukrainian plane was shot down last Wednesday. Families of the 176 victims are demanding change. I hope as an outcome there will be some preventive measure put in place so this tragedy will never ever happen to another family ever again. Over the weekend, Iranian officials admitted to downing the passenger jet, mistaking it for a cruise missile. <laughs> Protesters in Iran took to the streets and denounced their government's actions, but some joined Iranian officials who blamed the U.S. for creating a warlike atmosphere. I was dismayed that their first reaction was to, was to blame it as American propaganda or some type of mechanical failure. I think they did the right thing by admitting it. Now they need to allow the investigators in and take responsibility. Back in Washington, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo declined to testify at a hearing on the Hill this week focusing on Iran. Some lawmakers voiced skepticism that an Iranian threat against the United States was imminent. 
I think that it was both the lack of transparency as well as the nature of the threat that there wasn't um, consistent information. President Donald Trump via Twitter reiterated his administration made the right decision. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. News around Texas, one teen in critical condition, another in jail after a shooting at a high school basketball game in Dallas. Police say a fight actually broke out at a field house where the game was being played Saturday night. In addition to the teen that was shot, an officer working security also hurt. Yesterday, a 15-year-old boy turned himself in. He's looking at an aggravated assault charge. Two other kids identified as persons of interest. They were not charged. A Houston couple facing charges after their car was stolen with their 16 month old inside. According to police, they stopped at a gas station and left the toddler asleep in the unlocked car. When they came back out, the car and the baby inside were gone. Some 20 miles away, a ranger at a, was closing up at a park when he spotted what he thought was an animal. It was the baby shivering in its onesie. The child was taken to a hospital as a precaution. Not long after, deputies spotted the vehicle and arrested two people for kidnapping and car theft. The child's parents have been charged with child endangerment. It caught on camera in Houston, man's best friend earning that title this weekend by running off a guy in the middle of mugging the man who lives next door. Jose Luis Hernandez says he had just come home after cashing his paycheck when the man in the red pickup approached. He demanded Hernandez's wallet, then pushed him to the ground. The dog Ace ran the man off, but not before he was able to get money from a ripped pocket. The thief was able to get away in a black car that was waiting for him. Police believe the thief and an accomplice followed Hernandez home from that bank. Another Democratic presidential candidate pulling the plug on their campaign. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker dropping out of the race this morning, sending an email to supporters saying he doesn't have the money to build a campaign that can win and that fundraising would be harder since he didn't qualify for the Democratic debate Tuesday in Iowa. Booker would have also been pulled from the campaign trail because of the looming impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. He told supporters he will campaign for the eventual Democratic nominee for president and Democratic senators. But will he endorse anybody before that happens? That is a question. Another award for the new Chevy Corvette, this time North American Car of the Year. How the redesign of the classic muscle car got the automaker at the top spot still to come. And a Christian group has a beef with Burger King over an ad for the Impossible Whopper. What one million moms says is offensive about that commercial. But first around America, eight people hurt in Colorado after police say a man went on a stabbing rampage. It happened in Colorado Springs this morning. According to police, some of the victims were able to overpower that suspect and hold him until officers got there. The attacks happened in several locations near Interstate 25. All the victims survived. They were taken to the hospital. No word on who that suspect is or what may have prompted the attacks. Firefighters in New Jersey with all they could handle during a five alarm fire last night. The fast moving flames ripped through several buildings in Bound Brook. Among those buildings damaged, a pair of apartment complexes under construction, some businesses and at least two homes. Witnesses say that fire started in one of the unoccupied apartment complexes, quickly spreading. Surrounding streets were closed off and police asked people to stay away from the area. Luckily, no one was hurt. Welcome back, everybody. We are coming to you from the KSAT News at 9 set right here in the middle of the KSAT 12 newsroom to talk about what is coming up tonight at 9. There is a human trafficking town hall happening right now in San Antonio. This is a problem that our city sees time and time again. So our Courtney Freeman is there gathering information about people's questions, their their input, what law enforcement is doing to try to combat this. She's also talking to a survivor who shares their story, which is always crucial in trying to prevent this from happening again. Yeah, and make no mistake, this is happening in our city. It's happening in our area. Courtney will talk to one of the survivors of human trafficking about her, you know, her ordeal through the whole thing. Also going to talk a little bit about something you do on a nightly basis at nine o'clock. It is the nine at nine, not the eight at nine, <laughs> not the 10 at nine. It is the nine at nine that comes your way every night. <laughs> That's intentional, Steve. Yes. Okay, so the nine at nine, nine of the biggest stories making headlines today from right here in San Antonio, around Texas, to around the country and around the world. It is a fast paced, 
quick update on the stories that you want to know about. It all happens in the nine at nine. All right, Oscar nominations announced this morning. Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorites? Have you seen, you know? Unfortunately, I haven't seen. I know most you've been. A, you're these. you're pretty busy. I know. You got, <laughs> yeah, getting through a whole movie. You got away, lots going that's, on. That's yeah. a key for me. So we talk about who got the nominations, who got some of the snubs, and also, if you're like me, you haven't seen a lot of these movies but want to, we talk about where you can find them so that you can catch what all the buzz is about. A lot of people think Jennifer Lopez was snubbed. Uh, yeah, we talk about that tonight in our trending segment. Okay. We'll see you at nine. Katie. Thanks, you guys. Taking a look outside with live cam. Uh, yeah, so it's foggy. It's foggy out there. Uh, don't, do not adjust your screen. That is just the view from our downtown camera. It's foggy. The cloud ceilings have really, really dropped over the past few hours, so we're back to pretty gross conditions out there. It's no doubt been a very messy evening commute. Tomorrow morning, not much better. Temperature sitting near 60 degrees as the kids head out to the bus stop. Fog. Light rain will be back in the forecast. We've already got fog out there now. It's starting to become pretty dense. We'll talk about uh, when all of this will start to change with the arrival of our next front coming up in your full forecast. Ever had Cheeto fingers? Well, that orange dust now apparently has a name. Frito Lay says it's called Cheeto, and it's going on something new ready to eat popcorn. You can get it in two flavors, cheddar and flaming hot, of course. Comes in a variety of sizes. For more information, maybe even why Cheetle, you can go to the Cheetos website. Or how does Don Cheetle feel about it? <laughs> Burger King has been the beneficiary of some buzz thanks to its impossible Whopper, but a current commercial about that plant-based patty sandwich causing some controversy. A conservative group, One Million Moms, is taking aim at the burger chain over a curse word in that commercial. They're objecting to what they call the use of the D word. The commercial shows several people trying out this burger. Yeah, one man who tried it says D word, Hoover Dam, except without the Hoover, that's good. The ad has since been online. It's been online since August when Burger King began selling the Impossible Whopper nationwide. One million moms calling it offensive. I wanted I like to be careful. We, we not worked to, our way around that. Yeah, I want to be careful not to offend any <laughs> more. I didn't want it to be a million and one moms. <laughs> a fresh design on a classic car, enough to win North American Car of the Year, the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette, already Motor Trends Car of the Year. It won that last year. Well, a car has to be either new or substantially redesigned to be eligible for the award. The 2020 Corvette fits that bill with an engine that's behind the seats instead of under the hood. And that follows the pattern of high-end sports cars like Lamborghinis and McLarens, but the basic 2020 Corvette's a whole lot cheaper. It starts at $60,000. The Kia Telluride won SUV of the year, and the Jeep Gladiator was named Truck of the Year. See it here, essentially yeah. a pickup truck version of a Jeep Wrangler. All right, last week on National Bubble Bath Day, someone here, I don't know who it was, <laughs> His last name rhymes with Schmasky. Yeah. Asked when's National Rubber Ducky <laughs> Day? It's today, Adam Schmasky. I mean, Kasky. <laughs> January 13th is the day the nation celebrates everyone's favorite bath time toy, according to NationalDayCalendar.com. The date was listed as Rubber Ducky's birthday on a 1973 Sesame Street calendar, and the rest is history. <laughs> is anybody else here, Ernie, singing yes. the Rubber Ducky song? Would yes. you say that? When the Rubber Ducky was first introduced, it was actually made of rubber. That was in the 20s. But when the Second World War began, rubber was one of the things that was rationed for the war effort. So the toys were then made with plastic. The Rubber Ducky was inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame in 2013. All right, and I saw where they poured all those rubber ducks into the river there. Yeah. They used to do that in San Antonio where they would pour them all in and like you could w like you'd pick a number that's a, or a charity. That's a big thing in Chicago, right? Do they still, they I don't do know if that? they still do it here in town or not. I don't think so. It would be doesn't fun. doesn't seem like it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm just so sad that Adam Kasky isn't here to celebrate in person. He's <laughs> probably in his, you know, mad scientist laboratory right now watching <laughs> us. <laughs> yes, Being very probably. Yeah. Said about it there. Yes, probably. So. <laughs> All right. So, Myra said it well. Usually, this burns off. This yeah, fog we're seeing. No, it didn't. Not today. So we didn't get to warm up. So, 
that fog kind of hung around it got a little bit better this afternoon, but it has really poured back in and become started to become a bit more dense even this evening. And we could see a, a dense fog advisory coming out in the next couple of hours. Dense fog advisories issued when visibility stays below a quarter of a mile, and that's where we're at here in San Antonio. So that could be coming any time. The view this morning showed a lot of widespread dense fog. Things tried to clear up a little bit in the afternoon, but we were still stuck with some patchy fog, clouds, light rain. All the rain we got today at the airport only added up to five one hundredths of an inch of rain. That's OK, we'll take what we can get, but we've got some really dry earth out there. We need a good soaking rain and that really is not going to cut it. And you know, if you thought today, wow, it's been raining all day. That's all that was measured. So this was just really, really light rain that doesn't really stack up to much. A lot of clouds still out there. We're going to have a hard time seeing a lot of sun at all this week. I think it's a, I think a few peaks of sun the next couple of afternoons, but we've got a steady stream of moisture moving in from the southwest and that is going to keep a lot of cloud cover in our skies for the next couple of days. 61 now in Pleasanton and in Hondo, just shy of 70 degrees in Del Rio, 65 in Catula. Nice and cool out there, and now there's not a big spread between our air temperatures and our dew point temperatures. These numbers have really soared within the past day, day and a half or so, and compared to this time yesterday, our dew point numbers are up between about 10 and 20 degrees in most spots. So again, it's when the air temperature and dew point get really close together or even our the same. That's when fog develops and here's our visibility right now along in east of 35 visibility has really tanked just within the past half hour or so. We're down to a quarter mile visibility here in San Antonio, three quarters of a mile up in New Braunfels, half a mile from Pleasanton to Gonzales. So a lot of fog starting to settle in on the coastal bend southeast of San Antonio and we'll continue to see visibility fall this evening overnight and through the start of the Tuesday morning commute. So yes, tomorrow morning is going to look a lot like this morning. Very messy. Give yourself a little bit of extra time because it's not just the fog. It's also the light rain and drizzle that will be around through the start of the day on Tuesday. So the next couple of days, with the exception of some peaks of sun in the afternoons, uh, we're going to keep a lot of cloud cover around. Things will stay humid. Those dew points will stay high, and that's going to keep the possibility of some morning fog in the forecast, not only tomorrow, but also Wednesday, Thursday mornings as well. As we get into Thursday, a front will be moving in from the north. However, we expect this to stall out north of the Highway 90 corridor, likely somewhere in the hill country. This frontal boundary will create a pretty big spread in our temperatures. I'm going to keep San Antonio and most of us on the warmer side of things. So high temperatures will still be in the 70s as we get into Thursday, but some cooler air maybe in the northern part of the hill country on Thursday. But this boundary will also help to spark hopefully some more measurable rain for us as we get into Thursday. And that's when you'll see your highest chance of rain in the planning forecast this week. Things are really not going to shake up until we get to the weekend here Saturday 6 a.m. That's when we expect our next cool front to move through completely and sweep out all the cloud cover and the higher humidity. Until then, we're going to stay socked into this muggy air, a lot of clouds, and the potential for fog. So tonight, temperatures are not going to fall much from where they are right now. I've got you with a morning temperature in the low 60s. Fog will continue to develop overnight through the start of the day tomorrow. Carry a chance of some light isolated rain, mainly first half of the day. A few peaks of sun in the afternoon tomorrow. That should help our high temperatures to climb into the low 70s. A best chance of rain will come on Thursday. 40% chance of showers there. And then cool front early on Saturday morning will help to clear out some of the cloud cover and humidity. That will take our highs into the 60s, but colder air will continue to move in behind that front Saturday morning. So we'll be even cooler Sunday and then Monday for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. A couple of showers roll back in by Monday as well. All right, lots of chances this week. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. In case you missed it, up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It is Monday. It is January 13th. A dozen criminal charges. It's what a Comal County Sheriff's deputy is facing. 31 year old Sabas Mejia was arrested on January 9th in Northeast San Antonio, accused of operating a bar on WW White Road without a TABC license, failing to identify himself as a peace officer. San Antonio police say the establishment also had fire code violations and no food and beverage permit. 
The Comal County Sheriff's Office says Mejia is on suspension pending the outcome of an administrative investigation. Now to Iran where massive protests erupted over the weekend after the regime admitted to accidentally shooting down a Ukrainian passenger plane, killing all on board. Meanwhile, President Trump's administration continues to defend the killing of an Iranian general. In Washington, President Trump tweeting to the leaders in Iran, do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Back here in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott honored a man who stopped a gunman during a deadly shooting at a North Texas church. The governor presented Jack Wilson with the Medal of Courage. Wilson was at West Freeway Church of Christ in Fort Worth on December 29th when the gunman started shooting. Two churchgoers were killed. Australian firefighters have been working for months to bring reprieve to communities devastated by the bushfires that have been ravaging that country. And now, these heroes are being honored. The Sydney Opera House has been projecting images of firefighters to thank them for their service. The Opera House tweeted that it wants to, quote, send a message of hope and strength, as well as to thank the firefighters. At least 27 people have died nationwide due to those fires. Thousands of homes have been destroyed or damaged. It is getting foggy out there. The fog will become more widespread and pretty dense overnight and through early tomorrow morning. So uh, already messy roads out there now, and I expect another messy morning commute tomorrow. Warming steadily the next few days. The front that comes through to cool us down and clear all this out, that will arrive first thing on Saturday morning. But in the meantime, take it easy out there and remember to use your low beam. Headlights. Meanwhile, our friends in Del Rio and Eagle Pass are going, what fog? Yeah. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> yes. yeah. Thanks, Katie. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching the news at 6. See you on the Night Beat and online at 9.